Well, I was looking back. Your last uh, earnings call, uh, I think it was July 25th. Uh, you said the following, uh, quote, on the M&A front, acquisitions we've completed at CCS and Otis last year are contributing to our growth story. And then you said we continue to have a placeholder at a billion to two billion for M&A this year. But as I said before, we will be opportunistic for the right deal. So I would assume you're both being opportunistic and this is the right deal. I think it's given absolutely. it's only a month and a half since you said that. Well, it, Why? It is. It is the right deal. I'll tell you the, the reason, 30,000 new aircraft are going to be delivered in the next 15 years. The aerospace business is growing dramatically. We see revenue passenger miles up 5% every year. Growth is coming in the aerospace business, but with that growth comes pressure from the customers to take cost out, to continue to innovate, and having scale in the aerospace business is absolutely essential if you're going to deliver the value to the customers that they expect. And so we have the opportunity to bring Rockwell Collins, which is a great franchise, great first-class franchise with our aerospace systems business. We'll have a $23 billion aerospace system supplier. We'll have the ability to do things that others can't in terms of taking cost out, innovation, technology, digital, all of those things. And why now? You know, there was, a, some would think, an opportunity perhaps for you to have bought Rockwell Collins or at least made your interest known when they were trying to buy BEA. Um, they may not have been for sale, but we all know how those things can work. Why weren't you interested then, and why now, particularly since the integration of BEA is still ongoing, I would think it, that has some risk in it. It is. In fact, you know, I, I like to tell our, our people, when I start, started in the aerospace business back in 1989 with Sunstrand Corporation, our number one target for takeover was Rockwell Collins because of the similarities in our business. So this has been on our radar screen for a long time. And for almost an entire period, it hasn't been for sale. And we've had conversations on and off over the years. When the BE Aerospace deal happened, I had an opportunity to call Kelly Ortberg, their chairman, congratulate him on the deal, and say, Kelly, yeah, we got to look to see if there's something we can't do together beyond this. And so it just started down a, a path where we said, look, how can we bring the businesses together? Is that a partnership? Uh, should we talk about joint venture? And it really became apparent that the best way to drive costs out, to continue to innovate, was to bring the companies together. And I give Kelly and their board a lot of credit for a business that was never for sale. You know, they came very quickly to the conclusion this is the right deal for them, the right combination. So it was after they completed the BEA deal that you sort of said, hey, let's, can, yeah, we, was, can you guys think about this? It was, it was literally May when I called, uh, right. when I called and Kelly. And the deal closed, I think, in April or not too Yeah, long. they, they yeah. closed in April, about a month later. Uh, and I called them up and said, look, we should talk. And we did, and Kelly had a very open mind to this thing, and we threw a lot of different ideas around, and ultimately this is the one that stuck, and I think it's the right deal. You were asked this question on the call, but I'll ask it again. You are paying a double premium, in a sense. Rockwell paid a premium for BEA. I know as a percentage of the whole, it's not that large, but why, again, have done that? Are you happy with BEA? Does that fit appropriately into this deal? It's interiors. It's not the digitization of the uh, airplane. Peace, but I think you had to remember, as part of our aerospace systems business, we have a $2 billion interiors business of our own. We make everything from ejection seats to uh, cabin attendant seating to lighting in the cabin. We actually think we'll see more synergies from the BE Aerospace uh, operation than what Rockwell Collins is going to see. And I think they had about $190 million. As far as the premium goes, it was about a 25% premium, so a full price. But as I think about it, if we back out the BE Aerospace equity portion of this, what we're really paying is about a 30% premium for legacy Rockwell Collins. And when you're buying beachfront property, you can get it at a 30% premium. I think that's a pretty good deal. So $140, it's full price. But $500 million of synergies, 6% of sales, will add $5 billion of value to the businesses by bringing them together. So You're talking about that $500 million number. Now, analysts had some time to opine on this, given the leaks or at least the press coverage that it had gotten over the last month. Yeah. Not a lot of them came up to that high a number. Why are you confident you can get to half a billion dollars in cost synergies? Well, I think it's actually, we say 500 million plus. And, you know, it's 6% of sales. It's, it's pretty simple, though. If you take a look, public company costs, those are easy. Those go away. Duplicative SG&A, the overhead costs of running the businesses, that goes away. Supply chain savings, being able to leverage the scale of UTC's procurement organization, both direct and indirect. Again, there's a little bit of factory, but this is not a job story. This is not about taking it and closing a lot of factories. Let's hope not, because you've been down that road already. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure it was distracting, if nothing else. But it's behind us is the good news. And we're living up to our deal. I think the good news is, as we look at Rockwell, because it's, it's, so, it's such a great fit and there is so little overlap, you know, the antitrust issues are minimum, you know, less than probably a couple hundred million dollars of product overlap. 
we should get this thing closed and we should get those synergies quickly. Yeah, speaking of product overlap, you and I, at least the last time we spoke, was a long time ago, it was on this floor, it was about a year and a half ago or yeah, so. Yeah, I remember. You do remember, <laughs> ain't gonna happen. It's a famous quote, Jim and I talk about it a lot. <laughs> Well, this you were, is. <laughs> you're, of course, talking about any interest that Honeywell might have had in acquiring UTX, saying it wasn't happening, largely because of antitrust. Right. Now, that deal's never going to happen. We get that. But uh, the guys who were trying to make it happen in Honeywell may look at this deal and say, wait a second. You know, you've got, you put out this big map of the plane back then and said, look how much of the plane. It's too much. Customers will not accept it. The government won't. You can put that same map of the plane out right now and say, hey, wait a second. It but, looks very similar to what you had would have had if you'd, so the, if you'd the, accepted the, Honeywell. The deal. difference, David, is in this case, we've got about $200, $300 million of products that directly overlap. Very small out of a $23 billion business. With Honeywell, there was eight to $10 billion of product overlap, everything from auxiliary power units, environmental control systems, you name it. It was a great deal. If you think about the synergies you could have gotten. Oh my God, they were talking three and a half billion, right. if I recall. I mean, it would have been a great deal, but you'd end up divesting most of the aerospace assets that were, was where the synergies were gonna be generated. So this is a very different deal. There's the very little overlap. The antitrust risk, risk we think is very low. Um, and quite frankly, it's, you know, we'll bring these companies together. We can create a lot of value for our customers by bringing the businesses together. This is not about eliminating competition. This is about enhancing our product offering to have a better product for the customer at a lower cost. Uh, and we won't spend a lot of time on antitrust because I've not heard that people believe it will be an issue. Um, an emerging theme, though, seems to be this idea that you're going to split this company up down the road that you've now bulking up in aerospace and then Otis and obviously Carrier can go their own way. Is that true? So one of the things we put in the press release last night was the uh, a very simple statement that said, once we get done with this deal and we get the integration complete and we pay down some debt, we'll be able to take a look at a full range of portfolio options. At the end of the day, when the deal is done, we'll be about 60% aerospace, 40% commercial buildings with Carrier and Otis. Um, the question is always, do those businesses belong together? I would tell you today, we're gonna need the, all those businesses to start paying down some of this debt. If we continue to see a big disconnect between what we think is intrinsic value of UTC and the actual stock price, we'll look to do something different. And that's what I've committed to our board and to our share owners is, if it doesn't work together, we'll take a look at splitting it up. All right, so you'll be your own activist in a sense. That's the idea. Yeah, and that is the idea, and you hear a lot of that these days from CEOs, and it's a smart uh, thing to be, but how long? What, you know, what is your sense in terms of your borrowing, what, 14 billion in the public markets, right. I think, for this deal? How long until you actually begin to think about that potential problem in terms of below what you believe is the intrinsic value? So we think we'll close this deal somewhere between nine and 12 months out. The integration will take a year plus. And we'll start getting most of, the, most of the synergies in the first two years. So I would expect within two years, we'll be in a position to start doing the evaluation. Now keep in mind, if our steer price runs up, it makes the case much less compelling. To split off these businesses, you're talking about a lot of what we call negative synergies. You gotta set up $200 million of public company cost to make these businesses standalone. You gotta make sure the valuation on a standalone basis will support that. In the meantime, I need the cash, and Otis is a great cash generator, Carrier's a great cash generator, and they're great businesses. And frankly, they're benefiting from the same thing that the aerospace benefits from, which is a growing middle class, growing urbanization. So the macro trends that drive aerospace also drive our commercial well, we always talk to you, of course, when we bring you on about Otis and China in particular. Right. I mean, what's your sense overall as to global growth right now, given the, the, the lens you have to see it through, but carry you know, it's, it's, it's actually picking up quite nicely. And you know, the, the, the concern has always been Europe. When is Europe going to come back? And now all of a sudden we start to see Europe accelerate. We've seen very strong orders from Otis and Carrier in, in Europe. Uh, Middle East is still, of course, a bit of a drag with oil prices. China has stabilized, we think. Um, and the U.S., of course, is growing nicely. So it's not 4%, but I'll take 25 or 3%. So I think you know, as, as we look at the world today, we see growth accelerating. A little bit of inflation we see in some of the metals prices, but that's okay. A little inflation is not a bad thing. Uh, back to aerospace. Uh, the aforementioned Honeywell is currently reviewing whether or not it will consider separating off its aerospace business. Are you gonna watch that closely if in fact that occurs or doesn't occur as you continue to think about even two years hence a split of UTX? Yeah, the, I would tell you, David, we're all done with this deal. We'll have about $50 billion of debt. So we won't be in a position to do much on the M&A front for a few years, unless we have to use UTC stock, which I am not uh, typically in favor of doing. 
The other problem, of course, with Honeywell, as we mentioned, most of those businesses are right on top of our businesses. So the same antitrust issues will exist um, if we were to go and look at those assets. 14 and a half times EBITDA for uh, for this company. It is a full price. You said it yourself. It's a full price. Are you concerned at all? Your stock's down about 2.5% today? Look, these businesses are there for 30, 40 years. We build engines today that will be on wing for 30 years. We build elevators that are around for 50 years. Um, you don't do this deal for today. You do it for the next generation and for the next uh, 30 years. Uh, and finally, Greg, you've weighed in occasionally with us on larger issues. This morning, we're dealing with the president saying the DREAM Act may no longer be in effect. Immigration is something you've talked about, I think, a bit. Your diverse workforce. Any thoughts at all on that and where things are going? You know, I'm not a politician. I, you know, getting into this whole issue of uh, the deferred action, uh, it's, it's a difficult issue. I think, obviously, immigration policy has to be established that follows the rule of law. But at the same time, we have to be compassionate for those people that are already here. So hopefully they'll find a compromise solution that makes sense uh, to take care of those kids. You dealing with the president at all? The carrier thing is long behind you now? It's all done. It's all done. <laughs> uh, and this deal will be done nine to ten nine, months. Nine, nine to twelve months. Seems like a long time, actually. Well, 17 or so different jurisdictions have to approve it, everywhere from uh, the U.S. to Europe to China. So it just takes time. Well, Greg, we appreciate your time today. Thank you for David, spending with us. David, thank you so much. Us. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Greg Hayes, of course, CEO of United Technologies. Hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.